Hello, welcome to Music Theory Grade 4 Week 8. In this Music Theory lesson, we are going to be looking at chromatic scales. Chromatic scales are new at Grade 4. The word chromatic actually means colorful. The scales are very colorful since they use all 12 different notes available instead of just seven of them. The scales you have studied up until now, which are major and minor, are in a group called diatonic. Diatonic scales contains seven notes and are firmly based on a key and a key note. Or the first note of the scale, which is the tonic. Chromatic scales are not in any particular key. We can talk about chromatic scale in the key of C, for example. Instead, we identify chromatic scales by the note which they start on. We can talk about the chromatic scale starting on C, for example. To replay, to play a chromatic scale, simply start on the note of your choice. Start on the note of your choice. And then play all the semitones until you reach the starting note again. If we start on D, we play these notes. Let's take a look at the notes we'll be playing if we start on D. We play in D. E flat, E natural, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, B flat, B natural, C, C sharp, and back to D again. As you can see, the scale contains 12 different notes 12 different notes and we wrote 13 notes in total but the first and the last note which are D are the same note names so we're going to be looking at how a chromatic scale is written so we there are two standard methods for writing chromatic scales and can choose whichever method you prefer. The first, the tonic or dominant method or harmonic method. First, write the start and end notes. They must be the same note and octave apart. Make sure that if there is an accidental on the start note, you add the same accidental on the other end of the scale. For example, a scale which starts on B flat, B flat, must also end on B flat. Starting on B flat should end on a B flat, not a B natural not B natural or A sharp even though it's the same note on the piano but we can't write that then write the end note right at the end of the given blank space you will need plenty of space to add other 11 notes between these two so here's an example we have B flat as a starting note. We should have B flat as the end note. Next, write in the note which is perfect fifth, higher than the start note. We need a perfect fifth higher than a starting note. 
you can work this out as the fifth degree of the scale or dominant note. Counting from the start note. Or you can count five letter names to find the correct letter name, then seven semitones half steps to work out if it needs an accidental or not. In this case, the start note is B flat. Start note is B flat. The note which is perfect fifth higher is F natural. This is a fifth note dominant of B flat scale. You can use the major or minor scale, the result is the same. Or count five letter names B, C, D, E, F to find the letter name F. Then count semitones between B flat and F. Semitones between B flat and F. There are seven, so you don't need to add any sharps or flats. As another example, count the semitones between B natural and F. There are six. This means you need to add a sharp to the F, making it F sharp. If the start note of the scale was B natural. When you have worked out the fifth above the start note, write it on the stave, more or less in the middle. Don't forget to add a necessary accidental. And now, here's our fifth note. So we have B flat, we have C, D, F. That's our fifth. These two notes, B flat and F, are the most important ones in harmony. They are used to working out what key the music is in. For this reason, we keep these two notes clean, meaning that we don't use those letter names where anywhere else in the chromatic scale. In this case, it means that we can use the letter name B or F anywhere in the scale. So we know that B flat and F are the most important notes in our harmony. When we come to write the second note of the scale, then we find we can use B natural, even though it's the next semitone up from B, B flat. This is because we need to keep the letter name B for only. So we keep in B for only the start and end notes. Start and end notes. We will have to use an an harmonic equivalent. The note C that is an, an harmonic equivalent of B natural, so we can use that instead. So we have what? B flat. The second note is C flat. The next note up is C natural. Remember though that any accidentals already used will still affect notes later in the bar if you write this. So we have B flat, B flat, then C natural. You will actually have written two C flats. You must add a natural sign to the second C. So this is how we write it. 
you don't just leave it as C but we need to add the natural sign the note one semitone higher is D flat you should never use the same letter name three times in a chromatic scale so we can't write C flat C natural and C sharp we can write C flat C natural C sharp we because we can use the same letter names three times so here we have B flat C flat C natural D flat in fact, the easiest way to write out the chromatic scale using this method is to write in two of each note between the start and and middle notes. You've already worked out. So using the B flat chromatic scale again, we will begin by writing in pairs of notes on each line and space between B flat, F and B flat. So this is how we'll do it. B flat, C, C, D, D, C, E, F, G, G, A, A, B flat. So we've written two notes of each we added two notes on the lines spaces for c d e g and a then simply add the necessary accidentals so that each note is a semitone higher than the next so this is how we do it b flat c flat C natural, D flat, D natural, E flat, E natural, F, G flat, G natural, A flat, A natural, then B flat. Using this method, the descending, using this method, the descending chromatic scale will use the same notes as its ascending scale start with a higher B flat put F in the middle then finish on a low B flat fill in the pairs of notes between these cornerstones with the appropriate accidentals the second method is the sharps up, flats down method or melodic method. In this method, we use sharps on the way up in ascending scales and flats on the way down in descending scales. For all accidentals, expecting the start and notes. In an accidental scale, we only use sharps and no flats. In an ascending scale, we use only sharps, no flats. So let's take a look at the example. C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C. Ascending. In a descending scale, we use only flats. Descending scale, we use only flats. No sharps. No sharps only flats and let's take a look 
we have C, B, B flat, A, A flat, G, G flat, F, E, E flat, D, D flat, C. So we now see in this method ascending everything we which has accidentals it's sharp it's sharpened descending we're not using any sharps but we flatten all those notes which needs to be flattened as before make sure that the start and end notes have exactly the same notes with an accidental edit if necessary and again you cannot use three notes cannot use three notes with the same letter name can you spot the error in this scale how could you correct it let's take a look d sharp e F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, C double sharp, D sharp. Can you spot the error? Let's see. You could write the first C natural S B sharp instead or the last C or the last double C sharp S D natural. This method is useful because it results in a cleaner page with fewer accidentals. The brain of the player has fewer symbols to deal with, which makes his or her job easier. This method is often used when a chromatic scale occurs in a piece of music. Thank you for listening. Let's meet next time.